Historic House Judiciary Committee hearings on impeachment. Stay with us. This is Democracy Now!, The War and Peace Report. I'm Juan Gonzalez. The House Judiciary Committee held historic hearings on Friday about whether the White House overstepped its constitutional authority during the presidency of George W. Bush and whether or not such abuses would justify his impeachment. The hearing was billed as one on executive power and its constitutional limitations. Although the title expressly did not include the word impeachment, several Democratic Congress members and witnesses used the opportunity to begin impeachment proceedings against the president and vice president. Over 11 witnesses were called to testify at the six-hour hearing, including Ohio Democrat Dennis Kucinich, who has repeatedly introduced articles of impeachment in Congress. Other witnesses included attorneys Vincent Bugliosi, uh, Bruce Fine, and Elizabeth Holtzman, as well as former Georgia Republican and current Libertarian presidential candidate Bob Barr. The witnesses also included conservative law professor Stephen Pressner from West Northwestern University and, and Jeremy Rapkin of Georgia Mason University. Today we bring you excerpts from those hearings. We begin with Elizabeth Holtzman, a former Democratic Congresswoman from New York and two-term district attorney in Brooklyn. She is the author of several books, including the impeachment of George W. Bush. I think the question for this committee is what is to be done now and, the, and what can be done now. Prosecution is unrealistic. The administration will never prosecute itself. Truth commissions, the administration will stonewall them, as they have so many committees of Congress. So what is the realistic remedy? The only remedy, and that's the one the framers gave to the, to the Congress of the United States, the House and the Senate, is the remedy of impeachment, because no one can interfere with it. You ask the president or the vice president to give you the contents of the FBI statement. They don't do that. That becomes an impeachable offense. You could ask them to provide them the information under oath. You, can, you may not be able to finish the task, but you certainly can start the task which will send an important signal, not just to this president, <clears throat> but to future presidents. If President George W. Bush had knocked to enter the Constitutional Convention in Philadelphia in 1787, the presiding officer, President George Washington, would have denied him admission, and thereby hangs an alarming tale. The executive branch has vandalized the Constitution every bit as much as the barbarians sacked Rome in 410 A.D. The executive branch has destroyed the Constitution's time-honored checks and balances, taking the nation perilously close to executive despotism. The executive branch rejects the basic philosophical tenets of the United States of America. It does not accept that America was conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that sovereignty in a Republican form of government lies with the people, not with the executive that there are no vassals or serfs in the Constitution's landscape, that every man and woman is a king or queen, but no one wears a crown, and that the rule of law is the nation's civic religion. And the Founding Fathers fashioned impeachment as a remedy for attacks against the constitutional order. On December 9, 1998, a previous House Judiciary Committee issued four articles of impeachment against President Bill Clinton for doing something infinitely less significant